Hey guys, girls, happy Friday to you. I just saw someone post and said it was International Happiness Day. So let us choose on this great day to be happy. And I am very excited to have you guys here on a, well, I don't know if it's raining in your town, but it's raining here in Bryan College Station, Texas, where I live. But we are inside for today's activity, so we are not going to let that get us down and I'm going to introduce you to our teacher here in just a minute but we're actually in this incredible art studio let me show you guys yeah, this art all around us here I mean this is just incredible and we even have our friends from KBTX here so this is going to be on the news tonight and it's going to be uh, pretty awesome so just by being online with us right now you are by proxy going to kind of be on the news-ish, so it's pretty awesome on this rainy Friday afternoon. So, all right, we're going to be making fantasy castles today, and what's cool about that is it's a project you're going to start today, but that you can continue all during the weekend and next week and even past next week because I know some of us are going to be out of school a little bit longer, and so the way that Leanne has created this project. It's one we're going to start today and you can add on to. And I'll tell you more at the end, but she's even going to be working all next week at three o'clock central. So an hour after we start the lessons that we'll do on my page, on her page, tagged already in the, in the top, she's actually going to be continuing this project for the next week, which is pretty awesome. So if parents are looking for a couple of hours of stuff for your kids to do next week as the break kind of gets longer and longer, uh, Leanne's going to help you do that, okay? So, all right, let me say one thing really quickly. We're wrapping up the first week of these afternoon adventures. It's been a huge success. We've had over 600,000 views on the videos. Of course, the giraffes stole the show, but all of the videos have been great. You guys have been awesome, and in case you missed it, I actually announced that because most schools are continuing to be out, I'm going to do two more weeks of this content. So we're going to start back on Monday. We're going to have a one more visit from Dr. East, and she's got some pretty incredible animals to show us. And, and then we're going to go on Tuesday to a fire station, and we're going to see the fire trucks and all of that. And then I'll share the rest of the week's content with you next week. But one more big shout out to First Alliance Mortgage here in Bryan College Station. Super generous to underwrite this first week and grateful for them. All right. You don't want to hear me talk anymore, kids. I hope you have all your art supplies. And now I'm going to shift to Leanne. She's going to introduce herself and we're going to get started. Howdy. I am Leanne Hale. And this is my trusty sidekick, William Hale. William, have you done this project with me before? No, no, he's just like you, so he's gonna follow along and you can see what he does. So I'm an art educator and I'm also an artist and my favorite thing to do is to teach young people how to create, okay? So today we are gonna be creating fantasy castles. Here's one I've been working on. Will yours look just like mine? No, and I've been drawing for a really long time. So mine's kind of detailed because I started it and then I continued it, just like you will have the opportunity to do. So, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna take our shapes today. Everything around us is made from shapes. It's amazing. So we can break anything we, we see down into things we know like squares and circles. So today we're gonna start our fantasy castle with a square. I'm gonna use the square I have because it's easy, right? I love Prismacolor, so I'm gonna take the top off of my Prismacolor box and I'm gonna put it in the middle. You can change yours if you want to, but I'm going to make mine symmetrical. William, what does symmetrical mean? It means it's, it's the same on both sides. Yes, like a butterfly, right? The same on both sides. So this is going to really help me with my, my choices because I go, oh, is that symmetrical? No, I'm not going to use that. So I'm going to take my square. I'm using a Sharpie. You need to use a pencil right now. I'm using a Sharpie so you can see my lines. This Sharpie is... Uh, Nice and dark, but one thing that it's not, it is not erasable. So you need to be real certain. My square here has rounded edges, so I'm just gonna go with my rounded edges. You can use whatever shape you want, but I like to start with a square in the middle 
because um, then we can work out. We can work out from it so that the sides are the same. So this is the middle of my castle, where my great door is going to be, where we can welcome all of our guests into our castle. Okay? The next thing we're going to do is we're going to put... How are you doing, Lee? Good. I'm doing great. You're doing great. He's got a square that we have cut out of a Triscuit box. He could have also used the bottom of a Kleenex box. You can use whatever you have. So when you have shapes at your house, look at them and think, hmm, what can I do with that? Now, every great castle needs some towers. So look at this. I'm just gonna line this tower up. Actually, I think I'm gonna bring it down a little bit. That means that this tower is in front of my main gate. And I'm just gonna take this straight edge and I'm just gonna draw a line. You could use a ruler. You could do it freehand. You could take something else. If you're not caught up with me, don't worry. Take your time. Maybe mom or dad or somebody who has bigger hands than you at your house might need to help you hold your shapes in place while you trace them. And that's okay because sometimes we need help. Now, if you're older, if you're an adult, if you're an older teen, this project is good for everyone because art is for everyone. All right, and you can take this project as far as you want. And Chris said some people were asking about triangles. Well, you could also take a square and you could cut it in half and you would have a triangle. I can also take a square right here and I can make the top of my tower by just putting that point there and going right around the edge. See that? It's pretty amazing. I also have blocks. Lots of us have wooden blocks at home. You could lay those blocks out and decide where everything goes first if you want. So I'm going to continue building my castle. All right. I think I need a door. Do you think I need a door here? I think I do. Okay, so I want my door to be round on the top. Hmm, look, here's some tape. You could use a bowl. You could use a saucer. I'm going to use this tape. And I'm going to kind of eye it here. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm going to do about a half of a circle here. And then look, there's my door. I can take a straight edge. I can take the edge of a box. I can take anything that's straight and then just bring the door down. So Lee, while the younger kids are catching up here, what would you tell parents who have their kids home the next several weeks that don't feel artistic? Is there a good resource for them? Where can they find ideas on projects to do ongoing? Sure. YouTube channel called Art Hub for Kids. It's fantastic. Uh, it's, a, it's a father and one of his children and they do a drawing together and you get to see what a professional looks like and then you get to see what a child looks like and they go through and draw all sorts of different things. But it's also good just to practice drawing what we see. And when we draw what we see, we need to always start with shapes first because we know shapes. We don't always know what a dragon's head looks like, but we can look at that dragon's head and decide to start with a circle, then maybe add a rectangle for his mouth, and then move forward with that. So the more you practice, the better you get. So I think that we need something to protect our castle. What do you think, William? What does a castle need to protect the people inside? A gate. It needs a gate? It needs a wall, a gate, too, doesn't a wall, it? Yeah. Well, this is open right now. Do I need to close it? Yes. I'm going to close this. There we go. I'm going to close. My gate. There's my door. My door is closed right now, but we can open it up, and I'm going to show you how we can open it up. The next thing we need is we need a castle wall. There we go. There's my wall. And I also need to show that this castle has the bottom of the wall, too. I think what I'm going to do is make it even here. So we can use our tools, our straight edge. You could use a ruler, but this is just a piece of cardboard. We can use our, our tools to make things easier, okay? Every profession uses tools. In the art world, often our tools are very simple. Sometimes they're just straight. Sometimes we have curvy tools and circles and different things to help our drawing. Look at there. Now that castle is coming along. Let's look at these shapes again. All I have is a square. I have two awesome rectangles, right, with triangles on top. And then I have two more squares on the side that create my walls. They don't look like walls yet because they're just shapes right now. So we're going to go to the next step. And the next step is that we need to add 
details, all right? Details are what make things so much more interesting. And one of the details I could add would be a spot for my archers to be so that they're safe. Do you remember those things, William? The little battlements on the top, yeah. So I found that I can use Legos for all sorts of things. I'm gonna use a Lego brick here. So this might be a little bit small for some of our hands, and if it is, you could get something bigger. You could use a block. You could ask somebody with bigger hands and scissors to cut you a different size square, or you can draw them freehand, okay? You could just draw them by yourself. I'm gonna use this brick, and I'm gonna put it here, and watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna line it up with the edge, and I'm gonna make my first one. See that? Now, I need to leave enough room for the archer to be able to peek his head through there, right? Every great castle has to have these battlements on the top. Now, your castle, does it have to look just like this one? No, not at all, which is why art is so amazing, because just like each of us is different, all of our artwork is different. William, are you making yours different? Are you doing yours the same? I have no idea at this point. <laughs> Because <laughs> you haven't added your details, have you? Yes. Not details yet. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll just continue to add these really cool details, all right? You can go ahead and you can put your battlements all the way on the other side. If you have at home paper, it doesn't have to be paper like this. It could be a box that when mom and dad or whoever's in charge of, of throwing the, the trash out or recycling, when they get ready to throw it out, have them cut it open. This is really great paper to use, the inside. Um, uh, grocery bags, brown paper grocery bags, those papers that you bring home and there's nothing on the back, I use that often, especially for um, making notes and grocery lists and things, but you can also make art out of it. So let's continue with our battlements over here. And this project, once, once I'm done with you today, once I'm done here being with you, you're gonna continue working on this project because art, when you do really good art, it takes time. It takes a lot of time to get it right and get it the way you want it. And if you don't like it yet, and you're looking at yours and you're like, ugh, I really don't like my art, it's probably not finished, okay? It's probably just not finished. Okay, I've got my battlements. William, yes. I love those points. Those are incredible. Now let's see, I think I need some windows. I think that we need some windows here and I'm just gonna draw these freehand. And a, a good way to do this arch shape, this curve shape freehand is to do the bottom first, like that. I'm gonna put a window there and then I'm being symmetrical. So I'm gonna put a window here. I'm gonna put a window here. So I'm just gonna follow across and I'm gonna put one here. Yours do not need to match, but I'm just gonna make mine work that way. And then I'm gonna go up and around. I'm gonna go up and around. Look at that. I make sure when I'm drawing, I always have to rest my hand. I have shaky hands. So I always rest my hand or I put my kickstand down, my little pinky finger so that my hands don't shake. And that's helpful. All right, there's some windows. Um, I think that we need more of a tower here in the middle, like the grand hallway, so we can have dances and such. Let's see, I'm gonna use, I have another, I have another square, let's see. It's not as big as I would like, so look what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna move it over a little bit, and I'm gonna do one half of it here, and then I'm gonna move it over here. There we go. And I'm gonna do one half here. Oh yeah, that's what I like. And I'm gonna take my straight edge. Now your castle could have lots and lots and lots of towers. And it could have little outbuildings and people and all sorts of wonderful things going on. Or it could be very simple and more about the shapes. Let's see, what kind of uh, I think that I'm gonna put another triangle on top. So a way I can figure out how to get that triangle on top so that it matches on both sides and it's symmetrical, I kinda eyeball this and see where the middle is. I'm gonna put a dot here. 
And now I have three points. One, two, three. I can connect those. And when I have three sides, I have a triangle. Oh yeah, I'm liking that. So here's your main castle. You can change this, you can add to it. Some of my younger artists, this might be as far as they can get today because this is a lot of work. It's a whole lot of work. And you could take your castle, you could trace it in your black marker so you can keep your lines or not, or just start coloring. You could color it with crayons. I have crayons here. My favorite thing to color with is Prismacolor or colored pencil. So if you're looking for a new art product, I would order Prismacolors. They're the best colored pencil. You could also use watercolors, regular markers. You can use anything that you have at home that you would like to use. But the, the most fun I have when I get a drawing this far is to add details, those real fine details. And you can see from this piece where I've started doing that. After I got to this point right here, that's when I started having the real fun. When I started adding all of the flowers, and you can see how my door here, I drew patterns for the wood grain, and I made patterns for the blocks. I've traced my Lego blocks over. I've added all these flowers. I, I bet you can tell what the name of this castle is. It's a flower castle. Yeah, it's a garden castle. It is all about things growing. Do you know what kind of castle yours is, William? Wait, uh, um, no, I have no idea yet because I have not finished. You haven't finished yet? No, you haven't. It looks wonderful. Oh, here. Here you go. Yeah, here you go. So this is where I really, really, really enjoy art is putting all these little details that, that uh, really says who I am as an artist. I love pattern. I love line. I love using these little tiny markers. Um, and when we're younger, these details are a little bit harder, but the more you practice them, the better you get as you get older, okay? So this is, this is something maybe to, to aim towards some of my older students, some of my older kids, and some of my older, uh, some of my parents, some of my parents that are drawing along, okay? So now we can take this and we can move forward. Maybe it's a candy, candy castle and we can put all sorts of candies on here, or maybe it's um, a dragon's castle. Maybe a dragon lives in there. I would think it would be a nice dragon though. Absolutely a nice dragon. So now I'm gonna add some pattern. Instead of adding bricks to my um, towers this time, I think I'm gonna put stripes on them. Because that is a really, really fun idea. And when I make them curved like that, it's making my castle walls, my, uh, my towers look curved. And if I, if I curve the bottom down here, like this, now it really looks like it's curved. So think about what you want yours to look like. And when you finish with this castle today, you may think, I learned so much, but it's not really how I want it to look. And you know what you can do? You can take all these things we learned today, and you can start over with your own ideas in your head from what you've learned today moving forward. You could also write a story about it. Writing stories to go along with artwork is wonderful, just like uh, Mr. Phil yesterday showed you the artwork that went along with his story. This can be your illustration. All right, let's see, what else do we need? I think we need a door for somebody to come out up there. Can you hand me the tape, William? I'm gonna use the circle again. This time I'm gonna use the inside of the circle. There we go. I'm use the curve. Now, if people lived in here, I would think a prince and a princess or king and queen would come out and wave from that balcony right there. So we could go ahead and let's see. I think that I'm gonna add uh, polka dots to this part. Now, I'm drawing these by hand, but I could also take something like a Tinker Toy. It's really wonderful for young artists to practice tracing things. It helps their manual dexterity, helps their fine motor skills. You could also create a pattern.
Maybe it's an A-B pattern. Awesome. Let's see. What kind of pattern should I put here? Hmm. I'm going to think about it. Maybe you can tell me. I'm going to go ahead and make some flags. And I'm going to show you a really cool thing about making flags. William, do you know how the trick to make them look like they're flying? No. All right. We're going to have the wind blowing this way. Here's my trick to make them fly. I'm going to do this. Okay. And now I'm going to do the top of the flag. And then I'm going to do the bottom of the flag. that's fine. I'm going to do it again over here. This is the little open part because it's pulling away from the flagpole. I'm going to do the top of the flag. And now I'm going to do the bottom. Oh yeah. I need to do something up here. Let's see. You'll get started doing this and before you know it, your whole castle is going to be covered with greatness. on here. You can also hide things. You know how in video games they have things called Easter eggs? You can do the same thing in art. You can hide little things in here. And don't tell anyone. Let's see if they notice. I have in this one, look right there. It's a little tiny snail. There's a little butterfly right there. Didn't see that coming, did you, William? No, I did not. She's always got tricks up her sleeve, man. Oh, yeah. It's like a little private joke, a little secret. Put something in there and then show your art to someone and see if they notice. William, how's it going here, man? It's going good. What to, what's your sign say? My sign ha is telling you where to go to get to the basketball nice. court and the swimming pool. The social <laughs> distance swimming pool and basketball court. Those are lonely places right now. <laughs> soon enough, man. Soon enough, we'll be there. So I'm just going to continue to put in all these details. Now, once you finish with those, I'm going to show you where we're going to go next, okay? Don't feel like you need to be done. I'm just going to give you uh, some little steps that you can do. All right, so I have this one that I've been working on and I showed you. So some of the things that we can think about when we're doing artwork, think about your colors. Right here, I used oranges and yellows and browns for my castle walls, but I didn't use just one. You can change those colors. You don't have to just use one color. You can change them and it gives it more interest and variation. On my door here, I added, I added um, what looks like a wood grain with just some kind of curvy lines. I've added all these plants. Do you see how these are in front? These are in front of the walls. And we know that because they are overlapping. This creates space in our composition. All right? And then another thing you need to think about doing is uh, coloring. Try, try to stay in your lines when you need to and go out of the lines when you want to, okay? So you can see how here I've gone, my colors have gone outside of that line. See how they blend it over here? You just get to decide. And as we get older and our hands are a little bit better at holding things, we get even better at coloring and drawing. So right now, the most important thing that you can do is enjoy coloring and drawing, all right? So I'm gonna color this. Chris, how do we look on time? I think we're we're close if you wanna, yeah, yeah either way, a couple more minutes, yeah. Yeah, let me show you where we're gonna go. So um, I'm gonna continue to color this through the week, and then next week, if you join me um, at Purple Turtle Art Studio's Facebook page, you'll get to see this piece completed. But William, let's show them um, one of the castles and what they can do with a castle. Right. Let's move over here. So, I think that often when we make things, we should be able to play with them also. So this is, um, it's not a castle. This is one my daughter Gregory did. She made a cathedral. And right here is gonna be a beautiful rose window. You can ask somebody in your house that can show you around the internet to look up some pictures of uh, cathedrals with rose windows. And so we've taken our castle and, William, what do you have out there? What is that back there? A little crook. 
Ooh, look at that. Sesame Street, here he comes. Sanitation Department, Eden Castles have trash that has to be picked up. <laughs> we, have taken, we have taken blocks and some good old fashioned little people from Fisher Price and we've combined them to play. But look how I got my castle to stand. I took a Triscuit box. Okay, we love Triscuits. I cut the doors to my cathedral and then you can ask somebody with bigger hands if, you're, if you can't use those scissors to cut that out for you. But you're gonna do that after you color it so it looks nice and neat, right? So it looks all finished and, and looks like a place that loves to go. He's coming in. He said he has things that he's grateful for, so he's going to go into the cathedral today. So you can set up your, you can set up your blocks. Uh, if you have a train set, you could put a train going through your village. You could get your matchbox cars out. Remember we used to do that. You could find a spot for those cars to park. And then next week we're going to make, um, we're going to make an enchanted forest. We're going to make a village, and we're going to add on to this so that by the time we get done. Your um, fancy castle and village is going to take over the dining room or living room. It's so thanks for coming to see me today. So where can they keep working on this next week? Tell them again. Yeah, F my Facebook page is Purple Turtle Art Studio. Um, we also have an Instagram account and um, a website, purpleturtleartstudio.com. So next week at 4 o'clock Eastern, yes. 3 Central, yes. 2 Mountain, one Pacific, which is an hour after we'll do these afternoon adventures on this page, you'll be continuing the build out of the castle into an entire village. Yes, every awesome. day we'll add a different piece. So join me with your paper or your uh, boxes that we're working on the back of, and you're, you really only need a pencil when you're with me because we're gonna do all the drawing, and then you can finish them out with the coloring and stuff on your own. Awesome, Leanne, thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right, guys, we're going to wrap it up. But of course, you can spend the rest of the afternoon working on your castles. You can get your mom and dad to jump in, your brothers and sisters. Your whole family can build a castle. So this time of social distancing, we can still be building community, even if it's just online and through cardboard. So thank you guys so much. I hope you have a great weekend. Don't forget to check out Purple Turtle Art Studio on Facebook so you can continue the adventures next week. And on Monday, Dr. East is back with a fox and another squirrely little animal whose name I cannot remember right now, but I know it's very interesting looking and she says she can hold it and show it to us very closely and teach us all about it. So you guys have a great weekend. Take care of yourselves and we'll see you next week. Thanks.